Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter five is feet to inches. All right, so right, sorry. <laughs> One foot equals 12, inch, 12 inches. Write a function named feet to inches that accepts a number of feet um, as an argument and returns the number of inches in that many feet. Use the function in a program that prompts the user to enter a number of feet and then displays the number of inches in that many feet. All right, so we've been told that one foot equals 12 inches. We're going to write a function or a program that is basically going to calculate the number of inches based on the value or the num or based on what the user types for feet. For example, if the user types in one feet, we should the program should display um, number uh, 12 inches. The, if the user types in two feet, the program should display 24 inches and so on and so forth. <coughs> so since chapter five is all about functions, we're going to create a function to solve this. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's define that function that is going to calculate um, or basically convert from feet to inches. All right, so let's define a function. Well, over here it says we, we should call it feet to inches um, with underscores, but I like to use the comma case style. But you can call it anything. You can call it feet underscore two inches like, like the way this is. I'm just going to make mine comma case. So feet two inches. <clears throat> come on case where where each where, where the first letter of each word is capitalized uh, the first letter of each word that's from the second word gone and the first the very first letter uh, word is not um, the very first letter of the first word is not capitalized okay so we're defining a function called feet two inches this function is going to accept some argument or basically an argument that one at least one argument so I'm going to go ahead and define a parameter. Now, feet to inches, first of all, need the feet so we can convert to inches, right? So I'm going to define a parameter for the feet because that it's going to need this, it's going to need the feet. So I'm going to say user feet, okay? Or even, you know, user foot, user, user feet. Okay, user feet is going to hold the value that the user is going to type or, or pass into this function when he or she calls this function. Okay, so now once we have the user feet, Based on the value, we're going to calculate how many inches we can get out of that feet. We've been told over here that one foot equals 12 inches. So let's, now this is straightforward, right? All we have to do is just multiply the user feet by 12 because we know that one feet is equal to 12 inches, right? Straightforward, straightforward. But normally I like to explain this, you know, so that people have an understanding of it. It's just simply a ratio and, ratio and proportion, right? And there's a formula to it, right? Because, because not, not always are you going to get one is to 12. Sometimes you're going to get 3.4 is, is, is to 12. So how are you going to calculate, let's say, 8.6? You know what I mean? Um, so, so I'm going to go ahead and create, uh, explain use, using ratio and proportion. And it's going to be quick. Don't worry. If, it, if you already know, please feel free to skip through it. So I'm going to use a comment to, to, to do that. Let, let's, let me do this outside this function. Now we're going to get an error because we don't have anything in this function. So, But don't worry about that. But I'm using comments to explain it here. So I'm going to create structure here. So if one feet, okay, if one feet is equal to 12 inches, like the question says, then let's say, then let's say um, three feet, right, is equal to what? So basically, that, that's what the question is asking us to, f to find. The question wants us to create, create a program to, cal to calculate something like this, right? So if one feet is equal to 12 inches, three feet is going to give us what? And the, the, there's, a, there's, an, uh, there's a way to solve this, right? You can, you, you can, and you can use the same method to, to solve questions like if five feet is equal to 12 inches, then three feet is equal to what? You can use the same method, but right now we are dealing with one feet is equal to 12 inches, then then now three feet is, for example, this this value here is going to be what the user types. It's going to be the user the user feet. The user feet. This is what the user is going to type. So if one feet is equal to twelve, they, then what is the user feet, right? So the way we are going to solve this is, for example, assuming the user types in three feet, right? Sorry, <laughs> I and, and I was typing feet over here. This is one foot. I'm sorry. <laughs> One foot. <laughs> I was just, just the word feet was stuck in my head, I guess. 
one fourth. Okay, so if one fourth is one, and I, I was saying one feet, so <laughs> it's fine. It's if one foot is equal to twelve inches, then three feet is equal to what? All right. So the way ratio of proportion is this: if one foot gives us twelve inches, then three feet is going to give us more, right? It's obviously going to give us more. We know that because we know that three feet is uh, three is bigger than one, or we know three feet is bigger than one foot. So if three is bigger than one foot, then we know three is going to give us more because one is giving us twelve, and three, which is bigger than one, will give us more. We know that's all we know that is going to give us more. And, we, and we, with ratio and proportion, knowing that is enough because we, there's something in ratio and proportion that goes like, if more, less divide. If less, more divide. Once you know that, you've done, you're done. You're done solving questions like these. If more, less divide. If less, more divide. And what I mean by that is this. If one foot gives us 12 inches, then three feet we know gives us more, right? So if more, less divide. The lesser number of these two numbers, one, the one and three, divides. And what I mean by the lesser number divides is this lesser number, one, goes under three. So it's going to be three divided by one. And you always end up multiplying by what's on the right, right? So, so to explain ratio and proportion here. So again, if someone types in, let's say, six feet, one foot is equal to 12 inches. Six feet, we know, is going to give us more. And if ratio, according to ratio and proportion, if more, less divides. The lesser number of these two, which is one, divides. And what, what I mean by the lesser number divides is this one goes under six. It's going to be six divided by one. Then we end up multiplying by what's on the right here, which is 12. Okay. Now, remember we are, we are, we are dividing by one and multiplying by 12. That's the first case. Now, what if you have something less than one? You have that, say, 0 0.5. Now, one foot gives us 12 inches. 0 0.5 feet we know is going to give us less less inches right because that's less than one 0 0.5 is less than one okay and a consideration proportion if less more divide okay if more less divide if less more divide so if 0 0.5 feet is going to give us less inches then more divides the the bigger number the more number right the bigger number of these two which is one divides 0 0.5 so, and what I mean by that is zero, the bigger number goes under 0 0.5, and we end up multiplying by what's on the right, which is 1, which, which is 12. So it's going to be 0 0.5 divided by 1 times 12. Now realize that when we had 6, for example, or even 3, 3 feet, we were always dividing by 1 and multiplying by 12, right? So 3 feet is going to give us more. If more, less divides. The smaller number go, divides, which goes under 3. 3 divided by 1 times 12. We're always dividing by 1 and multiplying by 12. When it was also less, we're still dividing by 1 and multiplying by 12. If less, more divides. The bigger number, the more number of these two, which is 1, divides. And that means the bigger number goes under 0 0.5. 0 0.5 divided by 1 times 12. So in any case, we're always dividing by 1 and multiplying by 12. In any case. So... In any case, we are always, to, f to really find the number of inches, we are always dividing the user feet. Now, this value here is the user feet. We are always dividing the user feet by 1 and multiplying by 12. That's the actual formula to solve questions like these. Now, this is trivial, right? Because we know that 1 foot is equal to 12 inches. So we, all you have to do is just multiply the, the user feet by 12 to, to get the number of inches. But you can have something like this. If 6.7 feet right gives us let's say I mean I, this is just an example I'm not sure I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that's that's the question I'm sorry that's the real right answer so 6.77 feet gives us 56 inches then how do you calculate something like 6.8 no how do you calculate something like 67.345 feet you can use the same idea right if 6.7 feet is equal to 56 inches um, then 67 is, is obviously, obviously going to give us more, right? So if more, less divides. The, the lesser number of these two, which is 6.7, divides this. And that what I mean by that is the lesser number goes under 67.345. So it's going to be 67.345 divided by 67. And you always end up multiplying by what's on the right, which is 56. Okay, that's how to solve it. But in our case where we had... One foot is equal to 12 inches, and we had something like this. We know we are always dividing by 
1 and multiply by 12. And when feet was bigger also, we always still divide them by 1 and multiply by 12. So that's how we're going to calculate the inches, right? So I just thought, you know, th th thought of mentioning this and explaining this so that everyone is clear on it, okay? If you already understand it, again, feel free to go through it. I'm sorry if you know it um, already. Feel free to uh, skip through it. If, if not, and, you're, and you learned something from it, then great, I'm happy. All right, so to calculate the inches, we are always dividing the user feet by one, okay? Which is the same as itself, right? But I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, it's the same as, the same as the number itself. We don't have to, but I'm just trying to be very, um, very um, explicit here, okay? I'm not trying to be very specific here. Um, so although it doesn't, it, you know, although you don't have to, you, know, it, you don't have to divide by, you don't have to type it, div, uh, divided by one, it doesn't hurt to type it. Okay, we always divide in by one and multiply in by the user feet. Oh, hold on, sorry, <laughs> sorry. We always divide in by one and multiply in by 12 in our case. That, that, that's what we're doing, right? And this calculation gives us the user, the inches, right? The inches, sorry. No, you're not user inches. We don't even have anything user inches. So this calculation gives us the inches. So let's go ahead and create a variable. We need a place to store that. So I'm going to define a variable called inches and then store that in there. So when, once the user calls this function and then passes in the feet, you're going to use the feet divided by one, multiplied by 12 to get our inches. And once we have our inches, let's go ahead and return it. Let's go ahead and return inches this way. Right, and we're done. We're, we're done with this function. Okay, so the program says write a function named feet to inches that accepts the number of feet as an argument and returns the number of inches in that many feet. And that's what we've just done here. Now use the function in a program that prompts the user to enter a number of feet and then displays the number of inches in that many feet. Okay, so now we're going to create a program Okay, that is going to use this function to do what is, you know, to basically ask a user to enter the number of feet, and then we are going to use this function to display the number of inches. All right, so I'm going to create a main method, main function. Okay, it's also a regular function, but the main function is going to serve as our starting point of the program. The main function is the is a function that you should call when the program starts. Is is in many programming languages, I mean, many program, yeah, yeah, program languages. The main function or the main method is, 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 is the first function that is called, is a function that calls every other thing. It calls every other function or that, that runs your program, that has the code to your program. Right? So the main function is the function that you should call when starting your program, it's, it's your starting point. We are going to call this function in main, and then once we finish defining main, we'll call main itself, and main will basically call everything else, will we'll be the starting point of the program. So in main, we are going to write our program. Use a function in a program that prompts the user to enter a number of feet, right? So let's, let's in the main function, let's, let's ask the user to enter a number of feet. We can do that with the input function. And in the input function, we're going to ask the user to, ask the user to, <laughs> I typed ask, ask the user to enter the number of feet. So please enter the number of feet. Now the input function just displays this message to the user. Please enter the number of feet. And it, it also pops up some kind of text box and allows the user to type in something, right? And whatever the user types is returned as a string. It doesn't matter if it's a number. Even if the user types in a number, that number is returned as a string. So the user can type in, let's say, two. Two is not returned as a number, it's returned as a string. That's how the input function works. But the thing is, we can't use strings in calculations. We can't. We have to find, we, we need numbers. So in that case, we have to find a way to convert that string that is being returned by the user to a number. Okay, even if the user types in two, it's going to return as a string, so we have to convert that two to a number. So in that case, we need this number in this case as a float, right? Because, well, the user can type in two, or the user can type in 2.5, right? So we need to make sure we convert whatever the user types that is being returned as a, um, we, we need to convert it to a float, right? Because it can be a decimal too. So I'm going to call the float function and then surround everything that the user has typed, okay? 
with parentheses. So you know, in essence, I'm converting everything that the user has typed using um, typed. Okay, that is being returned by the input function. I'm converting it to a float. And once I do that and convert it to a float, that is basically the user, the user's feet, right? The the the, the feet that the feet value that the user entered. So I'm going to create another a value in main, call it user feet, and store that result there. Now this user feet is not the same as this user feet here. This user feet is only visible or is only functional. The scope of this user feet is only in this function. And then the scope of this user feet is only in this main function. These two, although they have the same name, are, are considered as two different variables because they are in two different functions. Okay, they're not the same. They don't see each other. These, whatever is in this function doesn't necessarily see what's in this function. These are working separately. They're like twins, okay, but they're not the same.